Hey, what's going on guys? Digna here in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can edit your very own Fortnite montage slash highlight in 2021. Uh, now, I know that there are a lot of beginner tutorials on YouTube just like this, but at this point, most of them are very, very outdated and they won't really get you too far in the, uh, the modern landscape, so to speak. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can do just that. Now, before getting to the video, I'd just like to say that all of the software links as well as all of the plugins you may need are in the description. So once you start this tutorial, just make sure that you already have all of those installed. Uh, the links, once again, are in the description and there are tutorials uh, that I have linked. They will be continually updated. So uh, just watch the tutorials and uh, yeah, use your common sense. Don't click on any weird fucking ads, all right? Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Let's get straight into the video. All right, so to start this video out, I'm going to be explaining what settings you need to change right off the bat. And I'm also going to be explaining the layout of Vegas. So firstly, as you can see right here, uh, Vegas will look something like this when you actually open it. Uh, there's going to be a big gray area down here. There's going to be a box right here. There's going to be a volume control here. And there's going to be a whole bunch of random stuff over here. Now, the first thing you need to do is go up into your file right here. Uh, just click on that and then go down to properties. Now, right here in properties, there are a couple settings that you need to change. So just make sure that the uh, the width and height is on 1920 by 1080. Make sure that the frame rate is on either 59.94 or 60. That is up to you. Uh, then go ahead and make sure that the full resolution rendering quality is at the best. Motion blur type is at the Gaussian. The interlace method is set to none. And that the resample mode is set to disable resample. Uh, after you've done that, just go ahead and name the template. So name it highlights, something like that. And then go ahead and click on save. Click OK. Uh, click apply. Remember to click apply and then click OK. Now you should be good to go on that department. So now what you need to do is head up into your options right here. Click on your options. Go down to preferences and click on that. Now go ahead and click on video. And you need to change your dynamic RAM preview max to roughly, I'd say maybe a third to a fourth of your total RAM. Now, what dynamic RAM preview actually does is it uh, it allocates RAM to Vegas for you to actually pre-render your clips. Now, I'm going to be explaining what pre-rendering is later in the video, but it is important that you have this set to at least a couple of gigabytes. If you have it set to eight gigabytes, I'd say maybe have it uh, the dynamic RAM preview max to maybe 2,000 or 3,000 megabytes, maybe even 1,000 if you really don't want to, uh, to strain your system all too much. Uh, but yeah, you want it to be at roughly that. Now, once you've done that, you should really be good to go. So uh, let me just sort of explain the uh, the main layout here. So obviously we have the project media right here. If you end up importing a clip or a song, this is where it's going to go. Uh, right here we have transitions. Uh, these are all of the transitions that are pre-installed into your system. Uh, and as you can see, there are a whole lot of them. Uh, next up, we have video effects, and these are just all of the effects that come with all the plugins you hopefully already have installed. If you don't, links in the description, of course. Uh, but here are all of the different uh, effects, so to speak. And lastly, we have media generator. Now, you may have a couple extra tabs. Uh, I've already removed the ones that you literally never need. So uh, if you are have any that aren't actually down here, you can just go and click on the X on them. You can delete them. Um, but right here on media generators, uh, it just, it's how you, um, generate media. So if you want to generate a shape, you want to generate like a solid, you want to make like a, a text pattern, like, like these, then it, you go here. Um, but yeah, that is really about the entire layout for this area. Now down here, we have a couple of different stuff. So we have the record, it's just, you can record your voice directly into Vegas. We have the loop playback. Now, this is literally just gonna loop the playback region right here. So you just adjust these arrows. If you wanna loop the first 20 seconds, you just adjust them and you enable this. Uh, but we want that off for now, so I'm gonna set that to off. Uh, right here is just play from start. Uh, I don't really use any of these. I just use the keyboard uh, shortcuts for these. This obviously stop, let's just go to start, go to end. Uh, previous frame, next frame, stuff like that. Right here, we have the normal edit tool. Now this is going to be, you know, just the normal editing thing. We just go around, we can zoom in, zoom out, whatever. All right, the next thing is going to be the envelope tool. And this is just you moving, uh, you're moving envelope points. Uh, now it's not really that important. You never really need this. I'm just gonna skip over it. Uh, now this next one is pretty important. So it's just, it's a mass select tool. So if you have like 15 different video tracks and you wanna move them all, you just select all of them using this tool, just like that. 
and then you should have them all selected. Uh, now over here, we have a couple of settings. So we have, these are just markers. So you can add a marker clicking on that. And right here we have a, 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 a region, I think it's called. I, I'm not entirely sure what it's called, but uh, you just make that. I don't really use it for anything. Y you don't really need it. Um, right here we have the magnet tool, which is the snapping. It's very, very useful. There are certain very, you know, uh, certain specific cases you don't want this on. But generally, I would say that to keep this enabled. Uh, down here we have, I'm pretty sure this is automatic uh, or auto saving. Uh, yeah, automatic, no, this is automatic crossfades. So I'm going to go ahead and make uh, two different solids for you guys. If I go into media generator and I just do solid color, just like that. So insert a red, uh, just like that, and a green. So with this on, we can fade these and it'll turn orange and then green. But if we have this off, then it'll just overlap like that and it, it just it'll be weird so i really would recommend having that on for the most part there are a couple scenarios once again where you won't need this on but for highlights specifically it's pretty good uh now down here i genuinely don't know what these are uh lock envelopes to events i never use any of these uh they're not going to be relevant so i'm just going to skip over those for now all right, now for the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you actually import your song as well as your clips. So first, I'm going to be showing you how to actually download the song. It's very, very quick and it won't take up much of your time at all. So what you're going to want to do is just hold out, head over to YouTube. Uh, it'll sound a bit weird because my mic arm hasn't arrived yet, so my mic is just on my desk. So it's going to sound a lot like thudding, uh, which is very unfortunate. But I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to search for maybe uh, Ronaldo by Blanco. Blanco, like that. And what you're gonna wanna do is just click on that. That was very loud. Uh, but once you're here, just go up into the URL, go to YouTube, and before the dot, you type in PP. And what this will do, it'll bring you to this website right here. Most of this will be blurred. Uh, and then you're gonna go into the video or the, and then you're gonna go into MP3 section. Just click on download, download MP3, and it'll start downloading just like so. All right, now once you have your thing downloaded, what you're gonna do is open up your file explorer and head over to the actual place where you uh, the song downloaded to. Uh, after that, just go ahead and go to it and then just drag it in to this gray area down here and the song should be imported. Now, uh, what you're gonna do is just trim the first part because you want roughly like seven seconds before the first beat. So uh, what you're going to do is just listen through it and we're going to see where the first beat is. All right, the first beat is going to be here. Just click on uh, right before this sort of audio wave goes up and press M on your keyboard to make a marker. Now, uh, this is 19 seconds, so we're going to go about uh, like here, probably. And we're going to press S on our keyboard to split it. And we're going to go to this first part and we're going to press delete on our keyboard to fully delete that. Now, what we're going to do is drag this entire thing back by holding left click. Just drag it just like so, so that the first part is on zero seconds. And if we play or if we just listen back to this, it should be pretty good. Just like that. Now, um, what you're gonna wanna do now is to sort of add markers to all of the different beats that you can see. So, uh, let's go ahead and add a marker here and let's keep playing. There is one here, so let's add a marker here. There is one here, let's go ahead and add it here. And there is one here as well. So, um, as you can see, uh, we have all of these markers here and it essentially continues in the exact same spacing. So, uh, what you can do is just sort of guess roughly where it's going to be. So I can confidently say that the next beat is going to be here because it is, it has even spacing to the previous beats. Now this is going to be true for most songs. There are a couple exceptions, but you'll know it when you see them. Uh, but yeah, that's essentially just going to continue. So the next beat is going to be here. As you can see, it's very, very easy to see. And the next one is going to be here. So I just add a marker there. 
and now we have all of these different markers uh, now what we're gonna want to do is just import our uh, our clips so what I'm gonna do is open my file explorer and I'm gonna drag this onto my second monitor you can just minimize it on your first if you don't have one and just head over to the folder that you have your clips in uh, now mine should be here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the exact same thing as I did with the song I'm gonna drag it in now you can put this above or below the song you can rearrange it later so it doesn't matter so I'm just gonna drag it in here now uh, always make sure to say no right here say no otherwise all of these settings that we changed in the first part are going to be completely lost so do remember to say no on that and now what we're going to want to do is sync the clip so just click on the first marker we have here and then just go to the start of this clip and just drag it in holding left click so just drag it into roughly before you know where the clip is and then just hold left click again, just click somewhere in the middle, and then just drag the entire part in. Now, once you've done that, just click on the marker, and then zoom in a bit, uh, pressing, you know, control, or no, you use the scroll wheel, I don't know why I say control, and then just drag it around until you can see the shot leaving the barrel. Now, once it's like this, what you're going to do is go to the start of the clip, uh, hold left click on the end, and then just drag it out, and after that, we have this. Right, right behind us, on, on top. So, like just like that. And now, as you can see, there's a lot of space after. So what we're going to do is listen back to the song. As you can see, there is a little clap here. So what we're going to do is just zoom in here. We're going to press S on our keyboard. We're going to click on this latter part. I'm going to press delete once again. Uh, and that's going to completely remove it. So if you play back, it should be synced and it should cut off at the clap. Us on, on top, so. Just like that. And the same will apply to the second clip. So if we just play this back, or if we just drag in another clip, just like so, just drag the first part out, holding left click, then just go to the clip, it's gonna be there. Just drag that, just click on you know the middle part, just drag that back once again, click on the marker, and then zoom in a bit, drag it to the right or whatever, to the left, wherever you needs to go, and then go to where the shot leaves the barrel, and then go to the end and drag it back. Now, you shouldn't be moving the entire thing. When you're dragging it back, you should be, uh, like, expanding or, you know, increasing the, the size of the actual, like, bar. So make sure that you're doing that and not just moving it. And if we play back, it's going to just like that and there is another clap here so we just press s on our keyboard then delete to delete the second part and i'm going to do this with one more clip so that you guys know uh what you're doing and you have the flow of everything so just go to the end drag it in till roughly when you see the clip just a bit before drag it back out to the third marker and then just change where it is right there and then go to the end and drag it back out just like so Go to the clap, which is going to be right there. And then we press S on our keyboard right here and then delete the third part. So now if we uh, play back, we should have everything perfectly synced. Right, right behind us on, on top. Just like that. <clears throat> and now what you need to do after this is you need to actually um <laughs> all right now what you're gonna want to do is just keep doing this until you have synced your entire montage now how long you want to do that it really does depend uh, and if there are any quiet parts just like this, you just keep the repetition going. You want to keep the same spacing in between all of them just to start. Uh, once you get more advanced, you can start playing around with that. Uh, but if you're just starting out, then I would highly recommend just keeping the same spacing in between all of the markers. Uh, now, what you're going to want to do is just go back here and I'm going to sort of explain how you actually add your velocity onto these clips. Now, Vegas Velocity is very, very easy to use. It is notoriously easy to use. So what I'm going to be showing you is just a simple velocity you can use for your videos. So just go ahead and right click on this bar right here. Just go ahead and click on it and then right click. 
and this entire thing is going to come up. It, it seems very complicated, but there is one thing you need to know and it's right here and it's insert remove envelope. And that envelope is going to be velocity. So just hold, hover over that, go right and click on velocity. Now this is going to open a green bar. And if you drag the bar up, the entire clip is going to speed up. And if you drag it down, the entire clip is going to slow down. Now, uh, you can go to the first velocity envelope here and just right click on it. And this is going to come up. So I'm going to set that to normal velocity to sort of reset the clip. And what we're going to do is just go to the marker and we're going to zoom in. and we're going to double click on the green line. Now, after that, you just go ahead and press your arrow keys or press these down here. So we go one, two, three back. Just going to double click here. And then we go back to the envelope and we go one, two, three forward. And we double click here. And now what you're going to want to do is just right click on this middle uh, keyframe, whatever. Uh, go ahead and set that to 300% for velocity. And then go to the last one and right click and set that to 50. Now, if you play it back, there should be uh, a sort of a ramp in speed just before the kill, and then it should go slow after. So let's see. As you can see, that is exactly what happened. Now, just going to repeat this with all of the other uh, clips that you have. So just double click in the middle. Uh, fuck. <laughs> just double click in the middle. Go one, two, three back. Double click here. Go in the middle again. One, two, three forward. Double click, right click, set 50% on the last one and set 300% on the middle one. And it should look like that. And make sure to do the same thing on all of them. So I'm just going to, I usually just use my keyboard for that. So one, two, three, just like that. Double click, 50 and 300. Now, once you've applied velocity to all of your clips, it is time to actually add our effects. All right, now once you have everything ready, the velocity is set up, I'm gonna be showing you how you can actually add some simple uh, impacts to your videos. So what you're gonna wanna do, first of all, is just go to the first clip you have, go to the marker and just press S on your keyboard to split this into two parts. Now what you're gonna wanna do after that is you go into your video effects tab and search for S underscore shake. Uh, go ahead and drag the default on to this track and uh, just going to play around with it. So what you're going to want to do, first of all, is uh, add a simple tilt shake. So what I'm going to be showing you to do, uh, or well, what the fuck did I say? Uh, what you want to do is go into your X shake right here. Just open this up and just drag everything down to zero. Uh, you really only need to drag the amplitudes down to zero, but I like to do everything because why not? Uh, so just make sure that both of the amplitudes are on zero and go to your tilt shake. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is drag the tilt rand amp down to zero and set the tilt wave amp up to five. And now essentially what's going to happen is uh, it'll start tilting. And, you know, uh, if we play back right now, it's not going to look amazing, as you can see. So uh, the first thing we can see is that it's way, way, way too quick. And the frequency dictates how quick the shake is and the amplitude dictates how much it shakes. Uh, the phase is just sort of a seed. So as you can see, if I just move the phase, it's, it goes in like different phases, obviously. And the Z distance is uh, how much it zooms in. Now, we don't really want to play with that for now. Uh, so what you're going to want to do, first of all, is just set the frequency to like four, maybe. And as you can see, it does tilt way too much. So we just go to the PK and we just drag the tilt in a bit, just like that. And that is way better in my opinion. But what you will want to do is just go to the first frame and you got to change the phase here because we want the phase to sort of instantly start to the side here. Uh, so if you go and play it back, uh, we should, should be something like that. But we will want to fade this in. So just go ahead and go to the first frame right here. And now we're going to do something called keyframing. And essentially what keyframing is, it's going to change the values over time. So if we go to the first frame and we click on the animate button, the keyframe button, and then we go down here, make sure that this is uh, enabled, the sync cursor to media timeline. It's going to make it so that if you move this uh, marker right here, it's also going to move down here. So what you're going to want to do is just go to the last thing right here and just set this like half it. So this is going to come up two. And this is just going to make it weaker over time. So if you just play this. Another, another, another. 
as you can see right there. Now, I would honestly set the frequency down a bit lower because you sort of want it to be a bit chill. So, yeah, roughly like that. We're also going to just drag this down a bit, I feel like. Uh, so just keep changing your stuff until you think it looks good. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this, honestly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a normal shake. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set the frequency to honestly like 20. And we're doing this because um, because we want like a heavy impact. So set the frequency to like 20, set the amplitude to maybe like 0, 0.2 even. And if we just go ahead and play around with this maybe like 0, 0.5, if we just go like five frames in, keyframe it and drag this down to zero. We want something that's going to add like a bit of impact to our actual thing. Uh, let's maybe drag the blur mo up a bit. This is essentially just uh, like the amount of blur that you have. And maybe we even drag the X and Y shakes down a bit and we'll make these waves. So we drag the wave up just like that. Uh, and essentially we will find something that looks good eventually so yeah that is really all you need to do all right i've been messing around with the shake for a bit and i'm gonna show you the settings i ended up going with so if we just click on this i have three different shakes set up so i have a tilt shake right here i have a y shake and i have just a normal sort of wild shake so to speak so as you can see right here, you can copy all of the settings that I have. Uh, just go ahead and show you them, just like so, if you decide to uh, copy these. Uh, same thing here, we have the X shake, have the Y shake, uh, with the Z shake, and we have the tilt. And lastly, on this, we have a tilt shake, uh, and it is just not really a tilt shake. It is mainly a tilt shake as well. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, all of these settings right here, you can go ahead and copy. And this all together, so it looks like this. Just like that, it looks like that. So now what you're gonna wanna do is you can add a couple extra effects if you really want to. You can go and add some flicker, uh, just S flicker, just drag default on, maybe set the rend frequency down to like 12. Set the amplitude to like 0, 0,08, something like that. And it'll add flicker to it. Uh, it's not really noticeable in the preview, but uh, yeah. Um, also, I would like to say that if your preview is loading slowly, you can go and go up here and go into the uh, the quality of the preview. So there are a couple, you know, qualities. I would recommend that you just stay on draft. Otherwise, it takes way, way, way too much memory. So if you're on draft and it's loading very, very slowly, go to draft quarter. It'll make the quality look way worse, but it'll be way, way easier for your PC to load. If it's like sort of eh, you can set it to half. If you really want it to have good quality, you can set it to full. And that's still going to be very, very good. So uh, yeah, just go and do that. And essentially what you're going to want to do now is just copy this impact into your other stuff. So uh, what you're going to do is just select this thing right here and press control C on your keyboard to copy it. Now you're going to go into your second uh, your second clip. Just go ahead and split it on the marker, just like we did the last one. Go ahead and right click on this. Go to selectively paste event attributes and enable nothing or just enable the video event effects and effect keyframes and click on OK. And this is going to add just the shake onto the second clip as well. You can do this lastly, just do it quickly. Just uh, do that and then everything should be done. So now, once you've done that, everything should be good to go. Uh, and yeah, that is really it. Now I'm going to be showing you how to pre-render, and I'm going to be showing you how you can actually render your stuff. So pre-rendering is essentially if you have a lot of effects in a single area, what you can do is hold a right click on your PC, set up a region right here, and then you're going to want to press Shift and B on your keyboard. So if you're going to press shift B right here, it'll actually pre-render all of this. So if we play it back, so on, on top, go. Go. it will have zero hitches. So there will be nothing that'll actually stop you from uh, like pre-rendering and making sure that the effect looks good. Now, lastly, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can actually render out your project. So what you're going to do is just go to file, click on render as, um, 
it might take a while to load it really does depend uh, just wait a one second here and it should be fine and you'll get all of these very very confusing formats uh, the one the only one I use is the Magix AVC AAC MP4 right here so uh, if you want to put this on YouTube I'm gonna use that example uh, only YouTube you're gonna click on the internet HD 1080p uh, 30 FPS right here uh, and just click on render options Un uncheck render render loop region only just uncheck that and then go on customize template so right here what you're gonna want to do is just go to your include video just tap that twice if you can't change the variables go down here to the bit rate and what you're gonna want to do with the bit rate is set it to constant bit rate either 50 or 135. Now 50 is going to be all right quality and the file size is going to be pretty all right. But if you set it at 135 mil, the quality will be really, really good. And the file size will be a bit higher. Now up here at frame size, if you're uploading this to YouTube, I would highly recommend you render in at least 2560 by 1440 because of the YouTube codec. If you only upload a 1080p video to YouTube and your channel is small, it's going to give you a worse codec the video will look worse but if you upload a 2k or a 4k video it forces it to give you the good code the good fucking up the good codec uh and you should be good to go after that and look a whole lot better so use these settings if you want a very very high quality video and use 1080p uh 50 mil bit rate if you want one that looks significantly worse uh now once you're done with that just click on okay and then render now you can select where you want to output this right here i just have this set up like that we can go and just click on this right here and just sort of uh, browse and project location or whatever just sort of select where you want to render it to uh, and after that just click on render and it will finish rendering um but yeah that is really about it uh, I would like to say that there are some free presets in the description as well as a tutorial on how to actually import presets. Now, um, <clears throat> now presets are very, very easy to come by. There's, if you don't know what ed packs are, they're just uh, editors selling their presets or whatever. Uh, but these, th this was just the basic stuff that you needed to know in order to actually start editing your highlights. Uh, but yeah, once again, there are free presets in the description as well as a tutorial you can watch from me on how to actually import those presets into your Vegas. Uh, so yeah, that is really about it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video. Uh, if you did enjoy, like down below, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. And I'll see you guys in a couple days and peace.